the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Amen. It is good to see you. It is wonderful to have this privilege to worship gathered in God's house with God's people. In the midst of a hurting world, in the midst of a troubled land, we come and we remember who we are and whose we are. Thanks be to God. So I invite us to look together at some opportunities in your handout and otherwise. So let me get my pupils adjusted to this distance. Please forgive me. So uh, yeah, every fourth Sunday, which today is, we uh, support in a very concrete way Homley Valley ABCCM. So this is no exception. Again, thankful for that ministry in the valley and may we help as we're led to do so. February newsletter, can you believe it? February's rolling right along. We do have a fifth Sunday in January, so that's next Sunday, but then February, so please, if you need to put anything in the newsletter, let us know this week, early on. We also have, the, uh, as we mentioned last week, the new, or the new directory, and we'd love to have your uh, contact information in there if you would like to do so. You don't need to be a member or an attender is fine. We love everybody. We'd love to see your name and information in there so we can keep up with each other a little better. And then uh, finally, please, for our uh, looking at, on the back side of your handout, we again lift up and give thanks for the Forward and Faith Capital Campaign. And we are really counting down. So with the five projects that were completed and also five mission outreach projects, we are now down to $1,580 if my bifocals are reading right. So we're very grateful and thankful for your participation and what God is doing through that here in the valley. Thank you. Well, there is one more. I'm talking about ABCCM, I should have mentioned earlier, they have some opportunities for, uh, for helping out and volunteering if you are able and willing to do so. So friends, I invite us to worship as is represented in your handout or on the screen before us. And let's share this prayer, please, together if you respond in the bold print as you remain seated. You, loving God, are the ground of our being and the river of life. You will our roots and the of the living water. You, God, are like the sunlight enticing us taller. And like the you are with us through hard seasons of summer heat. For your love warms and sustains us. Oh, let our gratitude be great. And let our worship be wonderful through Christ Jesus, your everlasting Son. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Let us sing. Spirit of faith, come down. to a particular time or place. What a gracious, 
communication path and method, oh God, with you, we give you thanks. May we use it regularly, daily. Prayers for our world and health and healing, Lord, as pertains to the pandemic and in other ways. Give us your strength. Sometimes you will see us through things, maybe not around it. You will always be there with us. And you will make a way when there seems to be no way. Help us to keep the faith in you. For it's all about you and not about us. May we always keep that in mind. We forget. We have short memories as human. Lord, you know that better than we do. Forgive us and help us to return to the paths of righteousness and faithfulness for your sake. Prayers for our land, for our nation, that we will practice civility and unity. Oh, differing in our views, but knowing that we are together as a nation and as a people for the purposes of honoring you and caring for one another and caring for the world. We pray this day for those who are struggling and walking through the valley of the shadow of death or of loss or of grief. Be with those, some of us here, who've lost loved ones recently or going through a tough time. May we pray, Lord, for those facing medical and health complications and issues. Continued prayers among them for Deborah Luther's mom, diagnosed with COVID, a lot of others. Prayers also for her dad, following a stroke and his recuperation. Strength, O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also lift up uh, on behalf of uh, Betsy Cooper here with us today and her family, praying for her, her brother-in-law, Tony, and also for a friend, Paul Brown. Lord, hear our prayer. Prayers for uh, Anita Sanchez sister to our member margaret anson and as we have heard anita broke fell fell and broke her hip and has gone through surgery we're grateful for the for the successful surgery that she had but recovering at margaret's home give those ladies strength this very day and lord our hearts and prayers go out to the surzan family with little wilson the five-year-old son and they as parents of course are greatly concerned about a possible and i we Lord, you know, we bring before you uh, little Wilson with his heart murmur and uh, pediatric heart testing that will happen on February 1st. So our prayers of intercession go out for Wilson and his family and pray that it will be nothing, but still it's a concern. And you hear our prayers and we thank you for that. And we bring things, bring things to your throne and the blessing is we can leave it there because it's too heavy for us to carry. We bring it to you, we leave it there because you're the almighty God, great physician. And we thank you for your constant care and awareness in our life. Even, even teaching us how to pray as your followers together, we pray the prayer you've taught us to pray, saying and praying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. And speaking of amen and praises, we give thanks to God for all his provisions, all the great, wonderful gifts of life, including you. And so this morning, I invite us to stand and to sing and to give thanks to God as we face the cross.
to hear one of our members share what prayer means to them. Speaking of testimony, the word, and let us hear together, friends, from Psalm. The psalmist writes this prayer in Psalm 105 for these reflections. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. I hope that's why we're here. Make his deeds known to all people, witnessing. Give praise to God's holy name. Let the hearts rejoice of all those seeking the Lord. I pray that's why we're here, seeking the Lord. Pursuing the Lord. Pursue the Lord in His strength. Seek His face always. And then from uh, 1 Thessalonians, two words, a verse. Now I believe we can all have a memory verse here. Pray constantly. Will you say it with me? Pray, Pray constantly. constantly. And you already know a memory verse by heart. Pray constantly. Let's, let's pray right now. Lord, thank you for the gift of prayer of which we've been able to avail ourselves already today, this morning. Communication with you, you've given us a pathway to do that. So help us, Lord, through prayer and through your Holy Spirit guidance to go deeper into your Holy Word so that we then may go wider into your needy world and witness and service for Christ's sake. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A family was uh, having some guests over for dinner one evening in their home. And while gathered at table prior to breaking bread, the uh, dad asked his four-year-old son to offer the prayer as they sat at table. And little Johnny replied, but dad, I don't know how to pray. His dad not anxiously suggested, just pray, Johnny, just, just pray for our guests and for the food before us, if you would do so, please. So Johnny began praying. Thank you, Lord for our guests and their children who this evening ate all my cookies and ice cream. <laughs> Bless them, Lord, so they won't come back again. <laughs> well, for not knowing how to pray, little Johnny recovered pretty quickly, wouldn't you say? He obviously had something on his mind and heart to talk to God about. Now, I don't lift up Johnny's prayer as a model of prayer. I mean, I don't know that we would, any of us would lift that up, at least as a public prayer in front of people. Yes, honesty before God, and we've got some of those prayers. However, Johnny's prayer, I would submit, it may provide us a, an inroad, you know, to consider today together the question, how do we pray? How do you pray? 
how to pray. A basic question. I need a reminder. I need a primer on prayer. There are probably, I remind us, as many ways and styles of praying as there are people here in this sanctuary today and more. We, we are different, right? Personalities and temperaments. Oh boy, are we. We have various schedules and biorhythms, some in the morning, some more alert in the evening. What works for one in prayer does not connect and work with another person. That's the way it should be. That's the way it is. But one thing's for sure. Do we agree? There is no one way or right way to pray. We, we can pray. Here's the gift. Here's the gracious gift. We can pray anytime, anywhere, in a great variety of styles. There's no one way. I think sometimes that's a block for us. We think there's a certain way. I hope we recognize today again and celebrate and give thanks for the vast diversity and different styles and practices of prayer represented right here. Even. However we pray, whenever we pray, let's please consider together, will you with me, three principles for praying, no matter how we pray, that are located in Scripture. That's our guidebook. And I'm going to say these, these prayer principles, these three prayer principles are like general guidelines for whatever style, whatever form, however you pray, whatever you pray, to employ in our journey in life. So first biblically guided prayer principle, diversity, which we mentioned, diversity. When it comes to style of prayer and even content of prayer, the Bible is filled, you can see it over and over, with a variety and diversity of prayers. From adoration to God, to confession, to thanksgiving, to petition, as in praying for one another and for our world. Wow, so, so many purposes and varieties and privileges in prayer. Every day we have the privilege of employing, using prayer to adore and praise God. Maybe we lift up our hands with that to symbolize adoration. We have every day the opportunity, to, the opportunity here to repent of our sins and there finding the cleansing and the freedom from our sin and our failures cleansed by, cleansed by the blood of Christ, which is a gift. Or we count our blessings, I hope, every day, number our days, count our blessings that we may, the scripture say, gain the wisdom of God. Pray for our world, yes, and for our neighbors and for folks closest to us, blessing others. All that and more is prayer, the, divide, the diverse variety of, of kinds of prayers and methods of prayer. So there's also the style, the diversity of style, not only the content, but the style. When it comes to praying, no one size fits at all. Whew. Customize your prayer life. You know, if, if written prayers in a journal works for you, do it. Maybe sometime do it. Maybe other times not do it. It's okay. Spontaneous prayers, you know, just driving down the road. Keep your eyes open, but, you know, pray. Praying silently. Praying out loud with others. Gathered formal prayers, informal, extemporaneous prayers that just elicit in the second that it calls for. Praying alone, praying with others gathered. In-depth prayers, brief prayers, brief prayers. I love it. I'm into brief prayers. Anybody else? Sometimes I can't think of what to say, but brief prayers. You know, I, I time myself, speaking of brief, I time myself for this very purpose this week, and I, and I pray the Lord's Prayer, and I had a watch at it. Okay, the Lord's Prayer, right? The model prayer, yeah? That includes everything. Everything. That we're, you know, it took me 32 seconds. And I didn't rush. 32 seconds to pray the Lord's Prayer, which covers everything. Oh, how we can, pastors are probably the most guilty. You know, getting off on this prayer and prayer language, whatever that means. I'm reminded of that old Scottish woman in the choir behind the preacher back in the day. And he had his long black robe on. He was praying these long worded prayers, this long breath prayer. And after a while, she got so frustrated. I couldn't believe she did this. But she pulled on his, she's right behind the choir. She pulled on his robe and said, for, for the Lord's sake, man, say what you're going to say and then say amen and then sit down. <laughs> Some of y'all feel that way with me, but that's okay. You can tell me. But 32 seconds to pray the Lord's Prayer. What is this about thinking we have to come up with some formula or some particular place? No, it's a relationship language with God. It's a communication path that he's given. It's so diverse, as many as there are people on this earth. So pray with those varieties. Use it all. 
employ every part of it that God's gifted us with. Don't worry about getting hung up on some prayer language or some preacher words, whatever that is. But just be real with God. That's what He wants. And He wants to talk with us in a loving relationship ongoing all the time. That's our verse. Pray continually. Pray constantly. 1 Thessalonians 5. Pray constantly. And you may think with me, and it's a great question. Pray constantly. Yeah, right, Michael. How can you do that? Well, right, Scripture. How can you do that? And I don't pretend, of course, as a human being to know all the answers to that, but I got an idea. I got a hunch. And I think it's on pretty good terms. That this pray continually is about an attitude. It's about a mindset. You know, it's, I, it's a posture to life. I call it a prayer posture to life and living where we seek to practice the presence of Jesus continually in our day, you know? Mindfulness of God. For some people, it's like God sighting. You've done that maybe. One year I kept a journal. Uh, one year I kept a journal. It was while I was pastoring here. And I kept a journal said God sighting. And every day I train myself to look through the lens of where did I see God today? It was amazing. Every day. And I found something. Now, I, I kept that up. But for one year I did it. It was a great discipline. It's amazing how you can see with those lenses when you begin to think that way, you know, reform our mind and think that way. The presence of Jesus practiced, the, the, the recognition, awareness of God being in our life, in our world. Mindfulness of God, awareness of Jesus, that's prayer. Throughout your day, issuing prayers. You've been there? I know you have. Whispering words of adoration. Maybe you're out if you're a nature person and you see, a, like this morning, an awesome sunrise and you say, oh God, thank you. Thank you for that beauty. Or, or in the midst of your daily work or somewhere along your path, you start, this guilt comes in and maybe it's a right guilt. And, and, and it's like something that keeps, you know, that, that signature sin that you and I have that keeps rearing its head. And we say, Lord, help me and forgive me. Right in the middle of the day. Right in the middle of your work. Right there, prayer. It's a prayer posture. Maybe the very same thing for Thanksgiving, I hope, and gratitude. All, developing that attitude of gratitude each day. All day long is the word. All day long, a life that's interwoven with prayers, with issue of awareness of God and practicing the presence of Jesus. Standing in the grocery line. Thank you, Jesus. What, for the waiting? Well, I have life. I, I have food. Thank you, Jesus. Take a moment of silence before making a decision and, and ask, what would Jesus do here? Mindful of what God would have you do through his love and grace. Pray without ceasing. Pray continually. Practice a posture of prayer daily. So, review, keep our prayers diverse, such a gift of variety, tapping into this rich and wide opportunities of, of, of prayer, and keep our prayers constant, yes. Finally, for our purposes this morning, Keep it diverse, keep it continual, and keep it real. Keep it real. God has attention. We talked about this last week. It's worthy of talking about it again and again. God resists fake. But God honors authentic, honest, real. Keep your prayers real, Michael and everyone. Last week's scripture, remember? The Lord is close to everyone who calls out to him. He wants that. He wants us to pray and call out to him. And to all who call out to him sincerely, it describes it, how we're to call out to him. Honestly, sincerely, authenticity. Oh, real. Pour out your thanksgiving and your praise, yes. But don't hide the hurt and the tough. Because our human condition is life is hard. And God wants us to come to him because it shows prayer shows our dependency upon God. We need you, God. I need you every day. Oh, I need you. Someone has researched the book of Psalms, which we're calling from today and reading from. Really, it's a Hebrew book of prayer. And they discovered in the study of the book of Psalms, two-thirds now, two-thirds of the 150 Psalms are Psalms of lament. Lament. Crying out to God. Hurting in the valley. Two-thirds calling out, and this is what God honors. Bring your doubt and your desert time to divinity. That's the call, as you would a trusted friend. Well, God is our best friend. Jesus is our most, most trusted friend. What a friend we have in Jesus, right? All our griefs and sins to bear. 
What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer sincerely. And sometimes we don't even have the words to pray, right? Yeah. Sometimes we don't even know how to pray or what to pray. Thus the expression, I don't have a prayer. Sometimes, some days, that's us. You've been there. I know you have. This is a sport group. I'm in here with you. There's times we don't know what to say or how to pray. The Spirit is on our side interceding at the throne of God. Jesus is there at the right hand. Some days we don't know what to say. We don't, want, we don't know what to pray for. And that, my friends, is one reason why we are a community of faith. That's why we need each other. Because sometimes you need to carry me in prayer, and sometimes I need to carry you. Because sometimes we don't know the words to say, and you need somebody to pray for you, with you. God has given us that gift as a community of faith. May we avail. At times, yes, the faith community is going to carry you in prayer. And other times, you and I are going to be carrying somebody else that needs us to pray for with trust and with sincerity to our very best friend. How do we pray? Keep it diverse. How do we pray? Keep it constant. A posture of prayer daily. How do we pray? Keep it real. Don't fake it. God hates pretension. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may our prayers and our pathway of communication with God stay real. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite us, friends, as you're able, as you're able this morning to stand and sing to our Lord in closing hymn. Please stand. Thank you.